In this, les in this lesson, we're going to um, learn about some theorems about roots of polynomial equations that will help us to solve them or find possible solutions. Um, this is a very algebra intensive lesson, so make sure that you're taking notes and following along and seeing what's happening. So for our objectives, we're going to answer the question, how can we use theorems to find possible solutions of more difficult polynomial equations? And then we're going to solve using the rational root theorem. We're also going to use the conjugate root theorem to identify complex roots and construct polynomials from those complex roots. So given the roots, put them together to find the polynomial that makes them. So our vocabulary. Um, so if we let p of x be a sub n of x to the n power plus a sub n minus 1 to the x, uh, or x to the n minus 1 power, da da da, to the a sub 0, this is a polynomial with coefficients, and um, basically what this says is there is a limited number of possible roots that p of x can have. And um, the integer roots must be factors of a sub 0, so whatever your um, constant is. And they also have to be um, of your coefficient of your largest um, power. So you have to take um, your factors of your constant divided by your factors of your leading coefficient. And those are your possible solutions. And that was really super complicated. Um, just to say to you that in order to find possible roots, what you have to do is you have to look at your leading coefficient. So our leading coefficient is 2, and our constant is 5, and we have to find factors of those, um, and then divide them all and find out what our possible solutions are in order to find what our real roots are. So in order to find possible roots, you take factors of your constant term, so 5. But only factors of 5 are 1 and 5, and it's positive or negative. Positive negative 1, positive negative 5. And I also take um, the factors of my leading coefficient, which is 2. So my only factors are 1 and 2, so positive negative 1, positive negative 2. So what we do is we take and divide our constant divided by our leading coefficient. And we get all sorts of, of possible roots. So 1 divided by 1 is 1, 5 divided by 1, 1 is 5. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, 5 divided by 2 is 5 halves, and those are all positive and negative. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8. We have 8 possible roots that can work. So what we have to do to find out if they're real or not is we make a table of values. So we say x is positive 1, x is negative 1, x is positive 5, x is negative 5, x is positive 1 half, x is negative 1 half, x is positive 5 halves, x is negative 5 halves. And then to find which ones are the real solutions, you plug each one individually into your x values and you find when you get 0. So your possible roots are when you um, plug everything in and you come up with 0 as your only answer. Um, so when you plug each one in, <clears throat> when you plug in 1, uh, 1 cubed is 1 times 2, um, minus 1, plus 2, plus 5, you get 8. When you plug in negative 1, you get 0. So when you plug in 5, you get 240. So you see all of those here. So our only real root is negative 1 because that's the only one that equals 0. You get 0 equals 0 at the end. So that's what we're looking for. <clears throat> so our only real root is negative 1. So if we only have one real root, but we have three roots because it's a cubic, um, what can you assume the other two roots are? Well, those are imaginary numbers. So why don't you go ahead and try. Um, you find all the possible um, coefficients and then you find what a real root is. So go ahead and pause. I want you to find all the possible roots and then um, I will put in what I have and then um, we'll look at real roots. So our possible roots of our constant are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, over our possible leading coefficient roots are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. So that doesn't leave us with a whole lot of options, but I get um, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 2 thirds, 
plus or minus 4, plus or minus 4 thirds, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 8 thirds. Well, isn't that fun? Okay, now what you need to do is you need to check each one of these and find out there should be three roots. Find out um, if we have all three real roots, if we just have one real root. Um, so go ahead, start plugging into your calculator. Um, go ahead and pause the video, and then I'll tell you which ones are real roots. Okay, so hopefully that only took like 10 minutes of your life. Um, anyway, so take all the possible solutions. You plug each one individually. The only one that actually works is positive two-thirds. That's the only real solution. So if there are three solutions, what are the other two solutions? They are imaginary numbers. You're so smart. All right, um, so what are the rational roots of this pretty thing? So we find the constant uh, coefficients. You find your leading coefficient factors. You take and divide them all. There's your possible roots, and there's so many. Um, you test each one to find out um, if there are any real roots. And I'm going to tell you the first one that I found was 2. That's so exciting. So when you know that something is a root, if you're trying to find all of the roots, you can go ahead and use your synthetic or your long division, whichever one makes you more comfortable, so that you can um, make it smaller. Because right now we have an x cubed, but if we factor, uh, take out a factor, an x factor, we're going to be down to an x squared. So it's something that we could like actually factor. Wouldn't that be exciting? Or use the quadratic formula. It makes our lives much easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the polynomial by doing the x minus 2 thing. So let me go ahead and I'll write this um, like right in the middle here. Don't mind me. Um, and we're going to do long division. So 2 is a root. So we want to take and divide by, um, let me see, hold on. So that means x minus 2 is our factor, right? Okay. So. If x minus 2 is our factor, sorry, I'm just getting really excited. So 2 is our root. I'm going to put that in our box. And we have 15, negative 32, positive 3, 2. Don't worry, I'm going to bring up the chalkboard so you can actually see. Ah, no, come back. What are you doing? Wait, nope. Come back. No. Okay, well, take 2. 2, 15, negative 32. 3, 2, and background, chalkboard. Okay, so we're going to use our, um, I'm going to use synthetic division because I'm more comfortable with it. So 15, that makes 30, negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, 0. So that means we have x minus 2 as a factor, and then we have 15x squared minus 2x minus 1 and then we can go ahead and factor this lovely alright so that factors into 5x plus 3 and 3x minus 1 we set each one of these um, equal to 0 so we get our other roots are negative 1 fifth and positive 1 third so those are the three roots. So it's a cubed three roots. They're all real. And here you go. I want you to work on this one. Um, so go ahead and find your factors of 6, your factors of 2. Divide them. Find a rational one. And then use your synthetic or your long division to find um, your other factors. And this will be your lesson check that you're going to do with your partner. Compare your answers first thing when you get to class. And then your homework is posted online, and have a great day.